A last-minute appeal from 45 Russian athletes and two coaches against a ban preventing them from competing in the Winter Olympics has failed. The Court of Arbitration for Sports Secretary General announced the ruling with just hours to go before the Games got underway in South Korea. CAS arbitrators have considered that the process created by the IOC to establish an invitation list of Russian athletes to compete as Olympic athletes from Russia could not be described as a sanction, but rather as an eligibility decision. The applicants did not demonstrate that the manner in which two special commissions established by the IOC was carried out in a discriminatory, arbitrary or unfair manner. RT's Ilya Petrenko now live in the host city of Pyeongchang. Ilya, crushing news for some of Russia's top athletes, including key medal hopefuls. Can you tell us a bit more about this ruling from CAS? Hello, Rory. So, there you have it. According to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, ridding the Russian athletes of their Olympic invitations isn't equal to punishment. And they're absolutely happy with the criteria that was originally chosen by the International Olympic Committee for these invitations. The president of the World Anti-Doping Agency is pleased. He is saying that the timing is great and also that all the clean athletes from around the world should be reassured right now. Besides this, the IOC is happy as well. They have already applauded the decision, as you can see from this tweet, although the Russians are obviously devastated. Did I expect Cass to reach this decision? 50-50, especially after Thomas Bach in one of his latest speeches pressured the court of arbitration for sport after it ruled in our favour. He was literally threatening the court. He was almost saying he would dissolve the court if it ruled again in favour of Russian athletes. One of the biggest problems, again, is that the group of 47 who never failed a doping test were never explained which criteria they didn't match to be shown that red card. And the 47 Russian athletes and coaches who were suing the IOC were from two groups. 32 hadn't been sanctioned by the IOC officials as a result of the Russian doping scandal at all. Then 15 received lifetime bans and had their medals taken away by the IOC a few months ago. But last week, the very same Court of Arbitration for Sport cancelled these lifetime bans. They rehabilitated their podium finishes and allowed the Russian athletes to compete again. But what we've got right now is a decision that completely contradicts their previous ruling. Some have argued that since the original court decision to cancel the lifetime bans, the uh, Court of Arbitration for Sport has been under immense pressure by the International Olympic Committee, the Olympic officials in general. Well, see for yourself. Cass uh, decision is uh, extremely disappointing. Uh, and uh, surprising uh, for uh, the, the IOC. We would uh, never have uh, expected uh, this. Uh, this uh, decision uh, shows uh, the, the urgent uh, need uh, for uh, reforms uh, in uh, the uh, internal structure of uh, CAS. So, did that pressure affect the verdict? Possibly. We will never find out for sure, but Team Russia is devastated. It's a disaster for the athletes, the coaches and the fans who are baffled by how unfair it could get. Some have already promised to go to civil courts about this to claim financial and moral damages. But in any case, even if they end up winning this very long legal battle, no one is going to give them back the chance to try and win some Olympic medals here in Pyeongchang. The Olympic movement does not consider me an athlete who deserves to be a part of it without even providing an explanation. I've never given a reason to doubt my honesty and my integrity. 
the games in Korea were to be the first in my career. Together with my partner, we've been walking towards this Olympics for many years. It was my cherished dream. I was shot. The Olympics were my dream, and I was working towards this goal. Throughout my entire sports career, I've given no reasons to doubt that I'm clean. RT Zilia Pacheco there live in Pyeongchang. Thank you. All right, let's discuss this further now here on RT International. Uh, Rick Sterling, investigative journalist, are joining us live here on the program. Rick, it's good to see you today. Some of the people that ban have no prior doping convictions whatsoever. So certainly many might struggle to make sense of the ruling by CAS. Some people are already asking, is this decision based more on sport or on politics? Well, I think it. I think it's clearly uh, politics. Unfortunately, this is a disaster for the individual athletes. It's also a disaster for the Olympic movement, uh, which is explicitly against national di discrimination. So, uh, last week you had the Court of Arbitration in Sport clearing uh, 28 athletes of any charges of of anti-doping violations. Uh, and yet they're all uh, ineligible uh, for uh, participation in the Olympic Games. So that in itself is evidence of national discrimination. Uh, it's, uh, this is a tragedy to see the Olympic movement um, bending to the political uh, winds and the Western media. Uh, recall that this all began two months before the Rio Olympics, when a, a big story in the New York Times featuring Grigory Rodchenkov um, uh, uh, began a, an investigation, and then it was just literally days and a, or a week before the Rio Olympics that, uh, that athletes were banned at that time. And then um, McLaren came out with this report uh, at the end of, of uh, last year, and they've spent a year, and then here we are just a few weeks before the Olympics, you've got these rulings, and then here we are, the day of the Olympics. This final, um, this, fi this uh, final ruling. ruling, this final ruling comes down it, with, with, with a court of arbitration for sport. I, I was going to ask you, Rick. I'm sorry for jumping in there, but if, if clean athletes can get banned for doping issues, and that yet they have nothing to do with dope whatsoever, I suppose I want to ask you, what kind of precedent does it set for the world of sport? It sets a terrible precedent, and when you hear uh, WADA talk, they're always talking about clean athletes, but apparently Russians don't count in that by their ruling. So this is really a travesty of justice. Uh, there needs to be a lot uh, more scrutiny of the McLaren reports itself. I've documented major contradictions and errors and inconsistencies in that report. Uh, mm. So the whole foundation of this is, is very faulty. Uh, it needs to be pursued uh, into the future and the Olympic, uh, uh, the International Olympic uh, Committee and the Olympic uh, 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 campaign, the Olympic Charter needs to be restored. Well, Rick, I wanted to ask you uh, for, for your comments on uh, the, uh, w what came from the uh, Russian luge team coach who said that the uh, CAS decision can be explained by heavy pressure on the IOC. Your thoughts on that? I think that's pretty accurate. And there was another ra Russian athlete who said we're, uh, we're, we're pawns in the game. And I'm afraid that's the reality. This is, uh, this is uh, happening because of uh, geopolitics. All right. Investigative journalist Rick Sterling, just stay with us, if you will, for a moment here. I'm going to come back to you in just a minute. Thank you for this so far. It is uh, not just Russian athletes, their participation in the Olympics that has led to controversy. The North Korean team's visit to Pyeongchang has also seen an angry reaction. <laughs> Well, the South Korean activists uh, protested Thursday as a North Korean orchestra gave a sold-out performance on the eve of the Games. They were holding up placards reading, No Pyongyang at the Olympics. And while the event is supposed to be about sport and peace, it seems these Games are becoming more and more about politics and that of the Korean crisis. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
전체 조선인이 터친 탐없는 감사의 품질이다. Today's military parade will show off the powerful status of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. As long as hostile policies from the U.S. continue, the mission of the Korean People's Army can never change. The United States of America will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder in our effort to bring maximum pressure to bear on North Korea until that time comes when they finally and permanently and irreversibly abandon their nuclear and ballistic missile ambitions.